So how do we get an entire track to gel and glue together to sound like it's in one place and it doesn't sound like it's in separate parts and separate people have played it at different times and just put it all together and it sounds incoherent. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that using reverb. Yes, you heard it from me, reverb. There's a good reason why you'd wanna use reverb. You hear a song that you like and it's coming from a bar or from a shop or whatever, you're drawn to it, right? And you're, you're going into that place where you're hearing the music and you vibe out to it. You know, you're getting more and more into it as you go into that place. So what we're trying to recreate here is a place. And the best way to do that is reverb. You're probably thinking, and this is what I was thinking when I first heard of te this technique is, this is gonna sound really bad on my drums, particularly on a kick or any, any sort of low frequencies. So there are ways around that and I'm going to show you that and I'm going to demonstrate that with one of my songs. You can tell here that there is actually, actually nothing on the master. It's a song I recently created. And this track is one of my typical tracks which has you know, a combination of house, R&B, funk, soul. Got a link below if you wanna check out some of my music. So let's go and have a listen. Okay, so it's pretty you know, bland at the moment. It has elements of decent track. What we're going to do is we're going to select all of these tracks. Control G will group them into a single bus. Then we're going to right click in here and create a insert return track. I'm gonna drag any of the ambience ones. Now let's hear how it sounds, and I'm not expecting it to sound too good, but what we're gonna do is we're going to send all of that reverb to the bus, all of it. So we've got to the peak volume of zero. I'm going to reduce the volume of it because this might hurt your ears. <laughs> so let's just listen to it now. So on the high end, it sounds fine, right? It's just when the beat comes in. So let's listen to the beat. So obviously that's not an acceptable sound for a master, but what we're gonna do now is we wanna bring in an EQ8. We're gonna take this low end here. We're going to take as much low end as we can out. Just begin the track here actually at the, where the drums begin. What we're also going to do is we're going to take number four here and we're just going to chop a little bit off the high, not too much, just a bit. We just don't want it to run too hot. Now let's just solo the, the effect there. You're still thinking that doesn't sound too good, but we're going to now reduce the amount of reverb that we're going to hear on the track. So let's just do that slowly, beginning at this bridge section here. Now what you do from here is really down to your taste. If you really wanna cut that low end out of the bass bit, you could just do more cutting and cutting. You could, for example, increase the amount of reverb you have at the low end or decrease it. It's just down to how you feel about the overall sound. But the whole point of this is to get a gelled, glued sound together. And I do believe that it sounds more coherent with this reverb. I will group these two effects together so you can see what it sounds like with and without. So let's start here, go back to this. Now let's A, B it. This is with.
Now, just one final thing that you can do to just give it a bit more energy. You can then go back to the effect and glue the effects together. What this does is it gives you sort of that sort of overall sheen and control over the entire mix. So amazing glue compressor. So we're going to set the attack to relatively high so we can just let the transients through and we'll compress anything after that transient release relatively low ratio of four bring this back to zero so we can hear the whole thing again clip soft and just see how it sounds Without, with, without the clip, let's increase the, let's reduce the attack a lot. See if that makes a big difference to the sound. So I would re increase the attack. So that's pretty much it. Um, in my opinion, this is not a game changer, but I think it's just one of those extra things you want in your arsenal of tools and techniques. You don't have to use it, but for me, it gives that sort of polish and sheen and that sameness and glueiness of the song that brings it all together and definitely worth a try if you want to, you know, have a go, have a go. If you're doing this already, that's great. And if you've got more tips for me, if there's something I'm not doing right, I'd love to hear what that is and learn from you guys. So once again, thanks a lot. And I hope you got something from this. And until the next tutorial, thank you very much and see you later.